Welcome to another tutorial video. We're going to be talking about how to walk through your resume or CV in investment banking interviews in this lesson. Now, this video covers the most important question in any interview, which is tell me about yourself or walk me through your resume or why are you here today? However, you can also read the written version instead, or if you just want the templates and examples rather than the full explanation, go to the article on m &I. I have the URLs on screen right here, how to tell your story, investment banking interviews, and also a shortened version of the URL here. And I'll paste these links in the YouTube description as well. So if you just want the written version or some of the templates that we're making available for free, go to the corresponding article and get everything there. If you do want to watch this in video format, here's what we're going to cover in this lesson. First off, we're going to cover what's different about your story now and what has changed about how to walk through your resume over the years. Then we'll talk about what your story is, how to structure it in four simple steps, and then some mistakes to avoid in your story. First off, what's different about your story now as of 2017? We've covered this topic many times in the past, but a few points have changed. First off, these days you must have previous finance related experience to have a shot, even at an investment banking summer internship. You also have to be more concise. We now recommend a 100 to 150 word outline and a 200 to 300 word full version. So you speak for a maximum of one to two minutes. Third, you must give more specific long-term goals and these goals have to be tied to the bank or group and the deals that it works on. Let's go to part two. What is your story? As I said in the beginning, it's your response to this question in interviews. Tell me about yourself, walk me through your resume or CV, or why are you here today? The real question here is why should we hire you? When you tell your story and you answer this question, you don't wanna recite your resume or literally walk through everything you've done. You wanna give a narrative that relates your experience to the role you're applying for, and then relate that role to your future and your goals. To be successful, your story has to be concise, 100 to 150 words for your outline and 200 to 300 words for the full length version. It has to highlight your best qualities, the most relevant skills, experience, and achievements, and then leave out all the rest. And then it also has to answer the main objections that interviewers will have. Can you work long hours? Can you talk to people? Are you committed to finance or did you just decide on it recently? To answer this question in interviews, we recommend a simple four-step structure. In point one, the beginning, you talk about your background, give a sentence or two on where you're from, your university, your business school. In point two, the finance spark, you talk about the specific person, event, or experience that made you interested in finance or banking. In part three, the growing interest, you talk about how you gain relevant skills and experience over time that prepare you for this job, the one that you're applying to right now. And then in part four, you talk about why you're here today and your future. So you discuss why this firm and group fit your long-term plans perfectly. This structure is easier to follow if you're an undergrad or recent graduate. It gets harder if you have significant full-time work experience. So if you're in that position, you can make your spark more of a gradual change over time, or you can just spend more time on the growing interest section and mention your spark within that. Let's go through each of these points in your story in more detail now, starting with the beginning. This part makes your story sound more natural, as if you're talking to someone you just met at a social event rather than giving a monologue. You can insert an interesting fact here about yourself that'll make bankers remember you. This part is most important for undergrads and recent grads because it's one of the few ways to set yourself apart. You could talk about where you're from or where you grew up. You could talk about your university, or you could talk about the business school you attended or your first job out of school, depending on the level that you're at. An example of an okay beginning would be something like this. I'm from China originally, but I went to high school in the US and attended Georgetown where I majored in math and economics and joined the student investment fund. This isn't bad, but it's quite generic because there are tons of students from China studying in the US and UK and the school majors and activities are all pretty standard. A better example would be to reference unusual activities, sports or experiences by adding just a few words to this beginning. Here, the person adds this point about studying abroad in Bhutan to research culture and politics, which is sure to start a conversation or generate some interest because it's not a particularly common country. And the interviewer could easily then follow up and have questions about this, which is good because 
you want the person to get into personal topics instead of quizzing you on intense technical questions right away. Now, if you have more work experience, you don't have to go crazy coming up with a unique angle here. For example, you could say something like, I grew up outside Chicago, went to Northwestern for undergrad, and majored in economics and finance. I did a summer internship in equity capital markets at JP Morgan, and then came back full-time after graduation. If you are working in banking right now, and you're trying to move into another group. Let's go to point two, your finance spark. Notice how many movies start with an explosion because they want to grab your attention and set the story in motion. Your spark does the same thing, but it grabs the interviewer's attention and sets your story in motion. You want to give a memorable reason for your interest in finance or investment banking more specifically. And with this point, specificity makes the spark. Here's an example. An okay spark might be to say that you got interested in finance when you interned in consulting and you analyzed clients' financial statements and you spoke with an MD at a bank. That's fine, but a lot of people have this experience. You can make it better by being a little bit more specific. For example, you could say that you interned at a nonprofit consulting group and you analyzed the statements of two nonprofit clients that wanted to merge. That is something that bankers haven't heard a whole lot before, and so it'll make you stand out a lot more in their minds. Again, if you have more experience, this part doesn't matter quite as much. You don't have to try so hard to stand out. So your spark can be lower key, and it doesn't have to be tied to a specific event quite as much. If you're trying to move from capital markets to M&A, for example, you can talk about a follow-on offering you worked on where the company issued shares to get funding to consolidate the industry. If you can't think of anything good, Look at your resume, previous classes, find something you can spin into your spark. Maybe you can go back to an accounting class and think through the examples you covered in a textbook or in class and talk about one of the deals or companies covered there and then say that that's what made you interested in banking. It's not ideal, but it's certainly a lot better than having a vague reason or no reason at all. Let's go to point three, your growing interest. This part is not just about how your interest grew over time, but how you gain specific skills that are required for this job. You should go through each of your main experiences and talk about what you liked about each one and then what you wanted to change. Now, both of these, what you liked and what you wanted to change should be skills that are required for banking or whatever role you're applying for. When you do this, you don't want to mention more than three experiences or career changes, or it's going to be way too long to fit into your story and the interviewer will get confused. If you're a student, an example of this part might be the following. You started out doing on-campus tutoring for math and accounting, but you wanted more real-world experience. So then you did marketing at this local company, you worked with clients, you helped the company generate 20% more leads, but you wanted something more quantitative and closer to finance. So then you did private wealth management, analyzed clients' portfolios, made investment recommendations, which you liked, but you also wanted to work with larger scale clients on actual M&A or financing deals. So in each part, this person expresses a skill or quality required for banking, but in each case, he or she also states something that he or she wanted to change, like more real world exposure, more quantitative skills, or bigger clients. And the person does this without introducing negativity or complaining. I've seen a lot of stories where the person says something like, there was no room for me to advance, so I left. That would sound much better if you say, I liked working with my team, but I wanted more formal mentoring and advancement opportunities. Finally, let's go to point four, why you're here today and your future. You have to be explicit about this and actually say, I'm here today because, and the formula is that you say in the long term, I want to accomplish certain future goals. I see this firm or group as the best way to get there because of deals, clients, or opportunities that you have. If you are an undergrad or recent grad, you can be a little bit more vague about your long-term plans, but not too vague. You want to pretend that you'll stay in banking for the long term, even though banks know that you're probably going to leave in two to three years, if not before that. But at the MBA level or beyond, you have to show more commitment. Banks are not going to hire you if you say that your long-term plan is something other than investment banking. Two examples of this part might be I'm here today because I want to combine my telecom background with finance and eventually become an advisor to companies in the industry. Your group has a great reputation for that with deals such as, give an example of a telecom deal, so joining your firm is the best way for me to get there. Another example might be to say that 
you're interviewing here today because you want to leverage your wealth management experience and advise larger scale clients on M&A deals, going back to the original transaction that made you interested in finance. Your group is strong in a geography or industry that's related to that deal. You follow that industry or geography. And so joining this team is the best way for you to work on those types of deals. Let's go to part four now and talk about some mistakes to avoid in your story. Even if you follow our outlines and examples, you can still make mistakes when coming up with your story. First off, don't spend too much time on the beginning. Don't go into your background, your family history, why you picked every class in university. It's way too long and it's gonna make your story too cluttered. Second, don't give too many plot twists. Don't talk about how you transitioned from being a novelist to a lawyer, to a hockey player, to a male escort, to an investment banker. Simplify it down to two or three transitions at the most. Third, actually give transitions. If you skip a transition or you don't give a reason for why you went from wealth management to equity research to banking, for example, the interviewer is gonna be confused. You don't need to give a long explanation, just give a few words to explain your transition. In a lot of cases, students in particular will jump back and forth, but you want to try to avoid that if at all possible. For example, if you did an investment banking internship, then a private equity internship, and now you wanna to go to a large bank, instead of telling this in strict chronological order and having to jump around, group together the banking and PE internship, make it sound like you did them at roughly the same time, say that you like working on deals, but now you wanna work on a different type of deal or larger and more complex deals, and that's your rationale for going to the large bank. And then the last mistake here is including information that doesn't help you or information that hurts you. Don't talk about short two month internships or a work experience gap of a few months or a prize from high school or your first year in university. Leave out anything that does not help your case in some way. Like I said in the beginning, if you want templates and examples, go look at the corresponding article. I have the URLs on screen right here. They'll also be in the YouTube description. If you wanna click on that and go directly to the written version and those templates. To summarize, with your story these days, you have to reference your previous finance experience more so than you did before. You have to be concise one to two minutes at the most, and you have to be more specific with your long-term goals. Your story is simply a response to the tell me about yourself or walk me through your resume question in interviews. And we recommend four steps for telling it. The beginning, your finance spark, your growing interest, and why you're here today and your future. When you tell your story, avoid giving too much detail on the beginning, avoid too many plot twists, avoid illogical or missing transitions, and leave out information that does not help you.